Good morning folks. It's about half four in the morning Christmas Eve. So I thought I'd do a little post because I've been awake a while thinking about things more over than anything um, considering how the year of 2023 has been. It's been a massive year of growth and transformation. Um, so I thought I'd come down in with Jim Jams and have a little chat about that so that you can watch this over the Christmas period when you're bored with your rallies. Um, sneak off for a bit of spiritual insight. One of the things I did think was, um, I feel like I've hopped a timeline. I, the, the transformation has taken me from one way of being kind of thing into another. Uh, it's not so much about doing as it is being. I feel like I've had, um, there's been an old me that's moved across. Um, yeah, across. And when I thought about that, I thought, what do I mean by moved across? Moved across from where? I feel like I was in one position, um, not fixed, but in a position kind of um, heading towards something that I thought I knew about, something that I thought maybe was guaranteed. It turns out it wasn't. And in that, what do I call it? Jarring change, let's say, I kind of hopped a timeline. So I feel like... I went from leaning towards something, a trajectory, to stepping into a tunnel that led me somewhere else. I feel like I've been in a tunnel all year. I'm gonna to have to draw it because I can see it in my mind, but I don't quite know how to explain it. So if I turn the camera around, I hope this makes sense, I'm not sure. It's going to, let's find a pen that works as well, because that can be annoying when it all runs out halfway through. Let me see if I can turn this around so that you can see what I'm talking about. They are, right, so I feel like, and it's better if I do it this way. So these are tunnels. Right. These are, I don't know, vortex moments on timelines. Forget that that one's a bit thicker than the other. It wasn't meant to be like that. It's just my rush drawing, like Pictionary drawing. Right, these are all tunnels. I feel like I was perhaps standing here at some point. Um, and at the beginning of 2023, I went whoop up that tunnel. And I've been standing in that tunnel um, like whilst life has faded out, three-dimensional life seems to have faded out, existentially, I have been poured into. So it is permeable, this tunnel, but I feel like I've been very much in this space of deep spiritual growth, deep realisation and deep revelation. And I feel like I'm about to emerge out there into this space now. These are like all parallel universes, I imagine. And, and, and the way I'm imagining it is, although there's a gap, between each timeline tunnel. So we've got to be in this vortex to be able to move across timelines, I think, which means like conscious ascension in self. While there's all these gaps here, I feel like at some point these end up, remember me saying to you before, the point is the point. I feel like they all do that and merge into one, but at any one time, wherever you are, you can't see that they do that. You just see the spaces in between, so to speak, because this goes on for eternity. So it all merges into one sort of solitary point. So, yeah, I feel like I've been up this flute here in the tunnel, which has been really weird because it's been, as I say, while it's been um, intense uh, in terms of feeling like I've been in this vortex thing, the three-dimensional world and a lot of things in it have moved away from my importance. I've kind of detached from some of those things and yet existentially, so more further reaching into the ether, I've been more in tune, you know, more um, aligned with something higher in myself. Something, I've had to stand back and observe a lot of what's happened this year. I've had to trust in um, in something beyond myself, my three-dimensional self that might want to control, or what might does, thinks she's got this idea of where she's going. I mean, I didn't see this year coming. 
I have to say, in the way that it, the events that have turned out. But I do see why this year has been the way it has, why I've been in that tunnel. I can see why I have. And, and it's been demanding because I've had to understand, accept and heal without knowing what the hell's going on and without knowing where I'm going. There's been a lot of confusion, but there's also, as I say, been a lot of revelation. So I've been going blindly along in my faith, which is where I've been out of that three dimensional reliance, let's say. And I've been relying more on the existentialisms of trusting in my intuition, trusting in higher source. And I have been very guided by my intuition. So something that is of me, but also something that is around me. I've had guides, I nearly bumped into one one night in the kitchen. It was that manifest. Christ, that scared the life out of me, but it was also quite funny, really. In fact, it was very funny because I was scared. That's what I do. So yeah, I'm in my gym jam state and I thought, right, I'll come down and talk about this because I feel like I need to. And then perhaps I'll get back to sleep for a couple of hours before having to get up for the day and get on and cook turkeys and things. But it's been a profound year of faith. Trusting that I am not just a human being, that essentially I'm energy. I'm reading the room as energy, whatever room that is, whether that's the outside room or the inside room the internal room, the external room, the room of another, the room of myself. I'm learning to do that more and get to know the signals and messages inside my body as confirmation of something that I'm feeling um, and as maybe assimilating in those rooms, whatever they are. My visions are deepening and they're more purposeful and I'm allowing myself to trust them more as well. They're giving me insights into how I'm being, what I'm thinking. Everything is reminding me, be careful of what you say and what you think, Claire. Becoming much, much more mindful, so more aware, more self-aware of the power of the word and the power of the thought and when there are stresses, because there have been many stresses, I'll have a bit of rose oil. When there have been stresses, and there has been, there's been, there's been deep anguishes this year, to allow that to move through and know that that's not going to be a permanent state and then to sort of be there with it, let that shift and then get back into a state of calm. Allowing myself to have a sense of gratitude for that moment just then where I had that anguish. I've got to a point where I've cried it out now. Um, there's no more tears. There is still a kind of primordial reach, um, a silent scream, let's say, occasionally, that comes from deep, but it's much, much less than it was. And there've been many times where I thought, is this mine or am I doing something for the collective here? I think we are doing something for the collective when we're doing something for ourselves, when we're doing healing and we're realizing, you know, old patterns. I feel like I'm churning out like a 30 year cycle here. I feel like I'm coming back to an original part of myself that just went into this flow state, I don't know, 30 something years ago. Without thinking. It's strange because this year there have been many, especially more recently, many, um, as the cycle is coming to a close, many more spaces where Memories of, of something are popping up. Whispers of deja vu, not really big deep ones like flashbulb memories, but, but whispers like this feels familiar, something is here. I feel much more aligned with my sole purpose, which is very reassuring because I'd have hate to have had the year that I've just had and not feel like I'm aligned with more of my soul's purpose or aligned with my soul self. Because that's what it feels like. I feel like I've been in a car and I've got really long arms and the steering wheel is there and I'm sitting right in the back seat driving from there. I feel like I'm in the chariot moving it, but I don't feel like I'm at the wheel clutching at that going, oh, like I would in a three-dimensional world. Being in that tube has allowed me, being in that tunnel has allowed me to sit back and observe myself driving the chariot. 
that's how I feel. And I feel much less concerned. I feel more um, um, resolute with the fact that actually my soul is steering and I'm just watching this go on. It's funny because every time there's a point of observation on self, so you can observe yourself on a 3D level, you feel like you sat back a little bit, say from your soul, but then I think, well, where am I now? What, what's happening now? I feel like I'm observing my soul. So well, who's doing that observing? That must be, I always imagine it to be further back than the soul or higher up than the soul. Those, those um, existential layers, I've become so much more aware of them. So while I've been in the tube, it's almost like I'm very much more aware of what's beyond the tube. Because I feel like I've been reduced to be able to expand, which when you talk about universal law and quantum physics and stuff, I don't know, I think there's many paradoxes, so that would probably make sense. I don't know, but I do. I feel like I've been condensed to be able to expand. And I would be condensed in that sense. That was the image I just got then. I've gone inwards and I've gone inwards. I've gone deep. It's strange to say inwards because then it's hard to go, well, how inwards then? Into your cells? And it may be that, because the cells would be universes, wouldn't they? In themselves. So maybe it is that. Maybe I've gone into DNA timelines, which is how I'm able to jump across those tubes. Gone into the Akashics of the ancestors that are not above, but they are within. Of course they are, as well as above. Yeah, maybe I've gone inside. I don't know. But whatever it was that was inside, if that's the case and I've gone inside and deep, then I've felt the outside, the vast outside resonating with what's inside. And so that has allowed me to feel like I'm in a space of tuning into energetic fields more deeply than I was before. And I know that I feel it through my body, as I say, but I'm also feeling it through the emotional body and the thought body, the, the cognitive body, and the sensational body, that is of sensations. But I've learnt a lot about my patterns this year, about the patterns of significant others around me, and what's healthy and what's not. And I'm about to take on profound changes in 2024. I'm moving into pretty much a whole new space. I think I've got a handful of my old people coming with me and that's it. It has been the biggest, most expansive turnaround. This is my 10th spiritual awakening in my life. All the other nine were big, but this one feels unexpected. So I think it feels bigger than, no, it just feels unexpected. So it is big. Even the others weren't expected, if I'm honest. No, none of them were. None of them. It comes to a point, doesn't there, when you can like be shocked by your own bloody life. This is what I mean about thinking that you you know where you're going, where you're headed. You goddamn don't. I haven't. Every time I've thought, this is it, we're set, you know, an event has happened, right? And let's say, you know, you're in processing and whatever, you know, game, they're big events. Um, and you end up, I don't know, say five, six, seven years later, feeling like, sorry, I'm just, I'm just in the middle of the night. That's why I'm being all... Mm. Um, five, six, seven years later, you think, okay, just, just dust it myself off from that now, take the lessons, thanks very much, moving on to the next phase, and then boom, another one. It's literally like a rolling wave. And I'm sort of back there again. And this one has been another one of those profound ones. As I say, the 10th major event in my life where I'm the growth. I mean, I'm Scorpio, so I am growth, right? I am transformation. I am the tower, the, the one with all the um, phases of transformation. What do we have? The Scorpio, the eagle, the something else, and the phoenix, and I don't know. All those things, yeah. Funny how 
the symbolisms of primordialism are outside of the phoenix are the the phases of scorpio you know the the inner animal don't know why i said that really i just thought i would i wasn't really going anywhere so it's windy but it's christmas eve looking forward to having a nice old dinner tomorrow i'm going to make some sausage rolls with litton today i just felt like i wanted to share not only that with you right but uh the fact that i've been on this journey and i am i think i'm the most transformed that i've ever been i am i've done some things this year that i never would ever consider that i would do i've thought some things that i never thought i would think and i've felt some things that i never thought i would feel and it's funny isn't it because as i say with these 10 awakenings it should be a film, shouldn't it? I think there's one called Ten Canoes, which is odd. Um, this is like Ten Awakenings. I never thought that I would be able to change in that way. You think that, you think that you're safe, don't you? You get to number nine, you think that's it, universe. There's a universal number, we'll stop at nine, right? That's what we're going to do, right? That's what we're going to do. And the universe says, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. We do that. And then they go off and they're like, right, next one. Let's line this up for right now. And emerge out of this. Just so different to who I was 30 years ago. And let me see. One, two, there was only a couple before the last, before this last three decades. Um, one, two, three, maybe. The main awakenings have been over the last 30 years. That cycle's about to close out. I've had a big hermit year this year. I've needed to. I've popped in and out of people. And again, I've, I've been and done things that I think, Ooh, <laughs> didn't see that coming. But I felt the need to. I've allowed myself to be spontaneous. And here he was the other thing. There was a time when I thought that some things in my life were in spiritual alignment, which meant that I thought that some things were not, and that these things were free will. Well, I'm now of the state of mind where I feel like all things are of spiritual alignment. And we do have free will, but that becomes part of the spiritual alignment. There are not times when you're on or off or in or out alignment you're on it and you're in it the whole time. It is shaping your world. We think, no. We think that, I think that, sometimes things are aligned. And sometimes they're just things happening that have no meaning. I don't feel like that anymore. I don't. I feel like it all has meaning. Even the random things that we might say are three-dimensional, that are human. Of course they are. Of course they're spiritually aligned. That's the whole point, right? You're here, you're a human having a spiritual experience on Earth. So you're not gonna be doing stupid shit that, I mean, we're all doing stupid shit, but I feel like even the stupid shit is aligned. Because it's there for a lesson. I mean, we, I feel like we can be more divinely in tune. We're always spiritual because we're coming back. If we're fucking it up, we're coming back to, to learn it because that's our soul contract. You can't breach your soul contract. You can't. You're going to have to learn the lessons that you, you, you've agreed to learn. You're not punished. But you might create some suffering for yourself. It becomes our karma if we don't remember who we are. But it all does rather seem to be aligned. So even the stupid shit, even the mistakes we make, or the mistakes we make. I don't quite know who decided what's a mistake and what's not. 
Not sure who made those rules. If we're going by law, earth law, and there's a lot of things that, yeah, we shouldn't be doing to each other, but yeah, there's a lot of um, contrite rules about that stuff from the old gammons making the rules. But in terms of our spiritual law, a universal law, which is our soul's evolution, which is tantamount to conscious ascension and expansion then, because the universe wants to do something, right? It, it, that's what its purpose is. In terms of that, we, we are, we're responsible for that. We're the vessel, the conduit upon which these things can transform, transmutate and grow and expand. And awareness has a huge role in that. The awareness of the human accepting its own spirituality, observing itself as a conscious thing, entity, aspect, thing, collection. That awareness or it is almost potential itself. I think that it might be. It is neither or it is neither either it's not it's not of material and matter and bone and flesh. And it's not purely of essence because of its attachment to the flesh. So the two need to come together. It's almost like the glue that binds it. The um concrete between the layers of brick. You know, the cement, not concrete, the cement between the layers of brick. The pointing, the point. Here we go again with the point thing. We can never escape it, can we? Always end up coming back to the point is the point. Which literally suggests accepting things as they are. Going very philosophical now. I may be carted away for Christmas Day, thrown in some sort of slammer some little soft jacket, which I'd rather not because I really like roast potatoes. I've made one hell of a cauliflower and vegetable cheese that I intend to eat. So I think I'm gonna sign off there. Have a beautiful Christmas. And don't forget to love yourself first.